Well, for for most of my life growing up as a as a young child and a teenager, I was, you know, I grew up Catholic and I went to mass every Sunday, but any sort of real sense of God's love, um, I I didn't really know. And I was um I went to high school and I, I was very secular. Um didn't didn't go to a Catholic school and I did everything my friends did, parties and you know, I was in several relationships over those years and and none of my friends at school were practicing Christians. So I didn't really have any good Christian witness or anyone that could really show me what God's love looked like in their own lives. So um I guess it was a grace though that I was still managed to get myself up for mass every Sunday, um, even though it was mostly because of my parents um, forcing me to go. And I'm glad they did because um, for some reason, I, I felt that God was kind of protecting me throughout that time, even though I didn't really have a um, real ascent in my faith. There was no active um, desire to really want to follow God um, or anything like that, or no sense of his love um, for me. So even though my life didn't really reflect in any kind of Christian life, I would, I would still be occasionally teased as being a Jesus kid at school. It was, it was funny because it, it was a bit ironic because I never really was actively practicing, but because they heard that I went to mass and they heard I was part of a youth group at one point in time, they, uh, my friends would tease me for being like a, a, a Jesus follower or something like that. But for some reason, I was happy that they called me that. I, was, I, I felt kind of proud of that. You know, I was being um, at least called a Christian. There was something about it that I was like, hey, at least they think there's something. There's, I felt that they saw something good in it, but they would, in a way, they'd use it to tease. But I, I kind of, in, you know, took a bit of pride in that. But I guess at the end of my high school year, I had I really had no idea what I wanted to do after after school and go into university. I wasn't really sure, so it did lead to a lot of soul searching, and I, and I began to ask a lot of, um, I guess the more deeper questions in life and things like what am I meant to do, what I really want in life, and eventually led to what do I really believe. And it was then that desire for something meaningful began to surface. I I thought I was called to to go into teaching. So I, I enrolled for um, to do an education degree at university. And then at the same time, it was just a, a real time of soul searching. So I began to read a lot and explore some of these deep questions. I'd look into other religions and faiths and read yeah lots of books on whether atheism, my, my best friend at the time was um, Buddhist. So I, I was just thinking what re and reading up on what they were believing and all of that. And it just got to... Um, um, I found that it was God's way of leading me back to, to himself because it, it was just that there was this kind of openness to just want to know what it was um, that was true and what I was meant to believe in life. So at the same time, I was still open to, to Christianity and my faith, uh, my Catholic faith. So I would still attend Mass, but providentially it was at that time when I was you know discerning what I was meant to do in life and at the same time what I really believe that um, at mass a particular event started to be promoted and that was World Youth Day in Sydney and this was 2008 and I was um, I just came out of high school and I'm from Sydney so it was a local event the hype was starting to build and all the preparations were happening and then something about it intrigued me and I, I didn't know what was going on but I really felt like I just needed to be a part of that um so that i was part of a youth group throughout that whole time and i never really got connected with it because i was just in and out and never really connected but i thought that um it was called cfc youth for christ um part of this group called couples couples for christ couples for christ which my parents were a part of so i was vaguely connected but um i decided to sign up to world youth day and went with them so i guess that was this and this was the time where I really started to, um, the change started to happen where an openness to, to God's love started to come in. 
So I guess what happened was I attended World Youth Day and it was an amazing experience of just seeing hundreds and thousands of young people walking through the streets of Sydney joyfully, happily, and also Christian. And, and you know, Sydney is a very secular city and, you know, religion is not really any sort of, it's really cast to the side. So friends of mine, even that are, are non-Christian were coming up to me afterwards and they were just speechless in terms of um, just how happy people were as they were just joyfully singing and just um, showing love in, in the, in the, along the streets of Sydney. And, and just to see so many young people who were proud to profess their faith. And you can tell that a lot of them were really wanting to find God. And, and I can see so many of them were actively seeing the presence of the love of God in their life. And I started to want that. And I really thought that, wow, it's I actually no people now. <laughs> they actually, uh, um, I can see it in front of me. So it turned into something tangible and, and, it became a real prayer that I wanted to find the love of God. The beautiful thing was that I was with my youth group and my youth group um, is a quite an international movement. So all the people from that youth group from all over the world was in Sydney. So we had a, a little international kind of youth conference straight after the, the World Youth Day. Um, it was then that I, I guess my prayer started to be answered and all those, those times of soul searching and trying to see what, what was really true and, you know, my own personal faith, um, it really became a moment of grace where I really had a personal encounter with, with the love of God. It was, um, it was just during that conference and I was with a lot of my, um, my friends and we were just praying and he, uh, I think it was just the, on the last day of the conference when um, a few of my the youth leaders that were leading me at the time said that they were planning to move on into other things, you know, or, and then there was a sense of passing on this kind of responsibility um, to, to the youth group. And I just felt like I need to step up and um, help out. But then all of a sudden I asked God, like, what do you, am I meant to do something? And then, and, I don't know what happened, but I, I just had this beautiful sense of just really knowing that he was real and there's this, um, that he really loved me personally. I, f I fell to my knees and, and all of a sudden tears started to come out. And I just, and I, it, it was just that time where you just, I felt like there was just, um, I don't know how to explain it. I just felt weak, but at the same time, I just felt there's, I was put in a posture of complete surrender and it was just such a joyful and loving experience that I was just tears were flowing down my eyes. And it just felt like at that moment, something's changed. And what happened afterwards was, was just a radical shift in just the way I lived out my life, the way I started to follow God. I eventually um, began um, being the youth leader in that group of that local area, at least. And, you know, I just started, I was just, just on fire with the love of God and the Holy Spirit. And then, you know, leading many retreats and going on mission trips around Australia and across, even overseas to do work with the poor. And, and yeah, and it, it just seemed like my faith was just real and active. And I just wanted to uh, share that with others. And the more my youth group started to grow, um, and you see the witness of the love of God enter into other people's lives. And a lot of those um, people are now like some of my closest friends. And, and it's just been such an amazing journey just to see how God really can work powerfully in someone's life and bring him to a, um, yeah, a real knowledge of his love and that freedom that comes with it. Um, yeah. That eventually led to me desiring him more and more to the point where the thought of the priesthood started to come out, um, to, began to surface. And, you know, as I started to learn more about my faith, I still had a desire for, I never really wanted to become a priest at all. I was always thought I was called to marriage, but it got to that point where I just wanted to give everything to him. And, um, and 
um, it led I guess to a, a place of realizing that everything that that desire to give everything was being shown forth in giving up my life through um, the ministerial priesthood so that led me to apply for the seminary and here I am almost seven years later um, about to uh, be ordained in a few months time so yeah thanks be to God yeah so I I do have a great friendship with um Saint Therese of Lisieux always always called it they in my diocese we we like to say that you know she's every priest's best friend in heaven so it's like and it was really her that when I got to know her in the seminary um, as her writings, but also just you, you can really like personally have a real sense of her own kind of intercession and, and her own kind of um, filial support in leading me to, a, um, to know the love of the father. And what I realized more and more in my seminary years is that, you know, even though I'm called to be, a spiritual father through the priesthood um it doesn't it, you can't really embrace that without really knowing yourself deeply the love of god the father and really knowing first and foremost before anything that i myself am a beloved son that i'm loved personally and and, and uh, in the words of saint Therese, just uh, just being a child searching for his dad it became it gave me that kind of freedom to feel like the responsibilities of, of ministry and fatherhood and leading people to, to the Lord was, um, was, should be done in that posture of just being a child and really letting the love of the father work through you. And it just, yeah, that freedom just to remain little and just trust in the love of the father and, letting go of your desire to control how you know you want your your life of faith to work and just surrender into his merciful love and i guess the more and more over those years in seminary and even today that i've been able to surrender to that it's been um um it's yeah given me the freedom to keep going and to uh want to give more of myself to god so i guess my favorite way um and it's really grown on me over the years is to really receive his love through Eucharistic adoration. Um, that kind of being still before the Lord and that kind of face-to-face -to -face togetherness when you're not really having to say much or when prayer moves beyond a talking to, but uh, simply just a being with and just resting and just the mutual presence of just being in front of the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. And that sense of being, of resting and receiving the Father's love. And I guess being in Eucharistic adoration where I can just be with him face to face, especially with the demands of ministry and, and wanting to serve others. I think that's been the real sense of that private time of just me and him. And I guess that's where I can really, really have, really have a sense of his, his powerful love for me. Well, I would say firstly to myself constantly, um, I would love, I, at least I would want to say to myself constantly and to others who haven't experienced God's love is um, I'm, I keep reminding myself of this beautiful quote by Pope Benedict the 16th. And he says, if we let Christ into our lives and we can say, if we let God's love into our lives and he says, we lose nothing, nothing and absolutely nothing of what makes life free, beautiful and great. No, only in this friendship is the great potential of human existence truly revealed. And, you know, that quote is really makes, um, really hits home for me because that sense of wanting to follow God and receiving his love, there's, there's a kind of fear behind it because there, there is a sense of that I follow God or if I give myself more to him, I'll, I'll have to miss out on other things in life. But my experience the more i've given myself over to the love of god the more i've received so much more in abundance and i and i i do try to say to people i've um i've received far more than i've ever given up and and that's 
ultimately because you know the love of god trumps anything that i could find in 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 this world and um more and more i've just come to realize that as um over those years when i've just really get gotten to know him